Morning, people. I thought I'd give you a, a quick garden update as to where I've planted Gertrude. I've swapped it around with the Eustacea Vi and I wanted to get a bigger plant pot. <clears throat> but the cost of, of these plant pots now, since COVID, everything at the garden center has um, skyrocketed in price. Ridiculous. I know people have got to get their money back, but um, yeah, pot's very expensive. But anyway, here she, here's where she's gone. We've had an awful lot of rain this past week, which hasn't helped. But I'm hoping she's gonna grow up and across the bottom of the, uh, the window there. <clears throat> but there she is. Smells gorgeous, of course. Very nice buds coming through. I think this is the, the last bit of flowering we've seen from Constant Spry. I am a bit disappointed with the amount of flowering considering it's only once flowering. But I think with all my roses, you see where we're exposed up here, the wind, May was appalling, freezing temperatures every day, pretty much every morning, overnight. But there's where, here's where Gertrude's gone. But I wanted to show you this, I didn't show you last time. This is the Lark Ascending. And she's a bit unwell. She hasn't flowered at all. I might edit some photographs in, but the buds were all diseased. I fed her appropriately. I haven't sprayed her with anything. But with all my roses, they're all a year old maximum. So this will be their first full summer. But this one here, the buds, they were all diseased. And when I spoke to David Austin, they told me to, to cut the buds back and see what happens. But something's happened here. Looks like a little caterpillar there having a feed. My wife bought me this rose and it's um it's not doing too well so I'll see what happens there with regards to that. This here is rose claret. It's not a David Austin rose but it's the most fantastic red. There's no scent to it or very minimum. I wanted to show you this uh, this Queen of Sweden. <clears throat> because this is fantastic. Unk Sung Hero. All of these roses have lasted through thunderstorms, wind, and that's important when you pick a rose. You've got to take these things into consideration, I guess. I've learned that. It's all very well picking a strong scented rose, but this keeps the rain off and the wind is doing really well. I'd say it was a feminine rose, sort of pastely colors, true colors is what you're seeing on your screen there and it puts up with the rain and the wind, or it has for me anyway. I mean, this is an old rose, that's definitely seen thunderstorms there. And it's still there. You have your masculine rose, like your Gertrude Jekyll, Gertrude Jekyll, strong rose, strong scent, but it doesn't put up with the rain. It can't cope with the rain. Direct sun, it gets bleached like Arthur Bell. Petals get bleached, strong scent, but it gets bleached. But this, considering the appalling weather we've had, and we have had appalling weather. Look at that, just perfect sort of formation. Really, really happy with this rose. Inner strength. 
Yes. I'm going to show you one more. In fact, I wanted to take you outside. I didn't show you this last time. These are all bare root. They were planted December, I guess. I'm not sure if I'm going to get away with it, but Gabriel Oak, strong scent. This one's gone over. And they're all you stacia vines there, all planted bare root in December. There's buds coming through, plenty of buds coming through, but it's a bit of a risk here. It's a bit risky. I've pushed it, you see it's very close to this hedge, but this hedge does need trimming back. But we'll see where we get with those. This here is another one, oh, I've done some weeding. <clears throat> This is Peace Rose. And again, it's the same thing. It has a flower, but this one I've noticed there is a big ant's nest just at the bottom. It flowered for me last summer. This was the first rose I planted, in fact, probably last June, last May. It flowered in May, and then unusually, it flowered again in about October, which for a once flowering rose, I thought was strange. Now it's not giving me anything. So I don't know what to do there. It needs tidying up. See the ant's nest there, right at the base of it. That could well be the culprit. But there you go. Oh, in fact, I'll show you some um, cuttings as well. Talking about saving money. Oh, here's my Eustacia by. See, I've moved it. But it's not doing. See, look, this is how it puts up in the in the rain. Excuse my thumbnail. I was gardening yesterday, digging. That one's fine. But again, you see, you, you, pl you plant these roses. And then you have a shock in May and June, weather-wise. And where we're exposed up here, strong winds. We've got to take all these things into account. That's cat mint there. Cat's pajamas, it's called. That's doing well. But here's all my cuttings from last year, own route. I learned how to do this on YouTube, but I wasn't sure how to how to um, trim them, how to prune them. This one I've rolled the dice and I cut it right back and it is starting to bud. But these are all growing. These are all growing deep secret, that's a fantastic rose. It's the same as the rose of claret, this one. Pretty much the same, same colour, but very powerful scent. But yeah, I wasn't sure how to, I mean, look at this one here. Pruning them. There's plenty of videos on how to grow them. But pruning them, I thought, wasn't as straightforward as that because everything is so fragile. So I've tried different things. This one I haven't touched at all. See, it's very leggy. even tell you what rose that is and I didn't mark it schoolboy error I learnt though right there you go let's jump that anyway oh in fact I haven't shown you Queen Sweet I meant Claire Austin but here's where I've put her bloody expensive pot but I put her just on the edge but she's looking very healthy waiting to flower. I know it's a climber, <clears throat> but we are running out of space. And it's the old dilemma, isn't it? I've got this um, telegraph pole here that she could climb up. But she's looking fine there. I'm hoping she'll do well. I'll have to watch the, watch the pruning. But she's certainly looking very healthy, healthy foliage.
there's that. And there's one last look at Gertrude. You know, I have noticed that Gertrude Jekyll is very, um, on film, trust me, this flower is past it. Oh yeah, if you get a close up there, you see, you can see the rain has not been kind to it. This is what I mean. You've got to get a right close up to see. But from a distance, it looks pretty damn fine. But like I say, that is a healthy plant. That is a healthy plant, chunky. It's got girth. It's got girth. I'm hoping that is not a sucker coming up. But it is definitely chunky growing up there. And that's the plan for it. Get it to grow across, across the top there. I'll tell you what, I keep seeing new things. <laughs> I do apologize, this here is an Arthur Bell. And this was growing beneath here and it was buried. We didn't know it was there. I think it was a standard rose at one point and it got buried by this winter jasmine. Didn't know it was there. When I cut this back, I noticed what looked like some rose leaves. So we've unearthed it and put it back. And I hope that that will grow up, grow up the front, but it might not do. I'm just letting it do its thing for the time being. Give it a break from its ordeal. But I'm pretty certain that it is Arthur Bell. Right, video's way too long. Okay, cheers guys.